Good morning. I'd like to thank Bill and Melinda Gates for including me today. My name is Padma Lakshmi. On the morning of my 13th birthday, I got my first period. And my sweet mother attempted to explain the sharp cramps I was feeling. It's just our lot in life, she told me, part of being a woman. I heard the echo of those words each month as the core of my body ached and pain seared through my pelvis and my back. I watched my friends in college take ibuprofen and just move on while I stayed confined to my bed in fetal position with heating pads and painkillers for days at a time. I wondered, was I just weak? Why did it seem like I was the only person barely surviving the most basic part of being a woman? Year after year, I told my doctors about my pain. Some brushed it off, some thought I was exaggerating, but none suggested it may be a sign of something serious. And mind you, I always had health insurance, I always had access to medical care. But it wasn't until I was 36 that a new OBGYN would give me a name for the condition that had held me back so much of my life. Endometriosis. Instead of expelling uterine lining during my periods, as it's meant to, my body reabsorbs it, proliferating layers of tissue that choke my reproductive system like weeds growing in a garden. Endometriosis can damage organs from ovaries to kidneys to bladders and much more. It's one of the leading causes of infertility and makes childbirth much more dangerous. And although most people couldn't actually pronounce it a decade ago, endometriosis affects one in 10 women of reproductive age. So when you see my face, I represent 190 million women worldwide who are being held hostage by pain and suffering in silence. But we aren't going to be silent anymore. Pain is our body's way of telling us that something is wrong. But too often, women's pain is ignored, dismissed, or discounted. And so we women also stop listening to our bodies. But it doesn't have to be that way. Women's pain is invisible because so often we are invisible to our doctors, to our researchers, and to our policymakers. For decades, medicine has equated human bodies with male bodies. Women are simply smaller versions of that default. It's what some call one-size-fits-men approach. As a UN Development Program Goodwill Ambassador, I've seen how gender-based bias, prejudice, and oppression can hold back women throughout the world. Misogyny affects every sector of our society. But in medicine, it can mean life or death. And throughout history, we've been routinely excluded from clinical trials. For example, did you know that even though nearly half of the population living with HIV worldwide are women? A recent clinical trial for a new drug excluded us almost entirely. Pregnant mothers are too often left out of new drug testing as well, even for diseases that harm fetuses. As a result of that research gap, we lack data on how conditions manifest differently in our bodies. Women's health is considered niche, relevant only to OBGYNs. But you know, this isn't only about reproductive organs. Did you know that women have a higher risk for chronic kidney disease, arthritis, 
and depression? Or that we're more than twice as likely to die after a heart attack than men? You can see why we're more depressed. And we deserve so much better because it's wrong. For two decades, I missed job opportunities, social events, and time with my loved ones. My pain made me feel powerless, ashamed by what I saw as my own weakness. But when I finally understood what was happening, I realized I wasn't weak. You know what? It took fortitude to endure everything I had endured alone. I was, and I am, pretty strong. And I'm angry that I didn't realize that for so long. Look, there's no cure today for endometriosis, but there is treatment. And through the foundation I co-founded, EndoFound, I'm advocating for more research, more funding, and more education, and more support for women around the world so they don't have to face this either on their own. I'm here to ask you today to join me, please, in fighting for more research on issues that affect all of women's health. As women who deserve answers and men who I know care about justice. Get mad. Get involved. We need everyone working to ensure equity in women's health care. It's time for goalkeepers like all of you, like us, to demand research that reflects women. Because when we can name it, we can change it. And that is real power. Thank you.